Hey guys, this is David with Average Joe Investing, and I have to ask you guys an honest question. So let's say you need a new shirt or new pair of jeans. Do you go out and buy them at full retail price, or do you look around, try to find yourself a coupon, or maybe some of them are on sale at this store? Well, if you're like me, you definitely do. The first place you look when you go shopping is on the sale rack. You definitely look to see, hey, is there $20 off $50 or some kind of coupon like that going on? So why don't we do that when we buy stocks? Now, I'm sure you guys have come across them as well, but I keep finding all these YouTube channels that have 5,000, 10,000 subscribers, and pretty much every single one of their videos sounds something kind of like this. Well, hey guys, um, I opened up the Robinhood app today, and I found this new stock, it's called Aerotine International, and uh, Robinhood says that they have great civilian and military applications, and I mean, I'm just looking at the numbers here, and over the last month, they've gone up 5%, over the last three months, they're up 20%, and in the last year, I mean, they're up over 100%, so this looks like a pretty good stock. No, it's not. You've literally done no research on these stocks at all. You, do they pay a dividend? Is this a new startup company, or is this something that's been around for a long time? Because if stocks have been around for a while, we can look back at the history and find an idea of what about a fair price is for that stock. And not only that, Airtime International isn't a real company. It's from the movie Wolf of Wall Street. And I'm sick and tired of coming across these channels where people just to put out content are like, hey man, I found this stock that looks pretty good. They're not putting money into these things. They're just trying to make money off you guys because you're watching their ad revenue when they're talking about stocks they have no idea about. So in today's video, I wanna bring you guys 10 stocks that are actually on sale. And these aren't garbage stocks. These aren't, you know, oh man, I found this penny stock that's 10 cents cheaper than it's been in the last three days. No, that doesn't help anybody. These are all gonna be blue chips to companies that are worth billions of dollars that you can buy right now and be very happily invested five, 10 years down the road. These are all gonna be you know, well-established companies and hey, just for whatever reason, they're at their one month, three month, or maybe even the yearly low. So let's take a look at these stocks and to be completely upfront with you guys like I always am, I am currently invested in six out of these 10 and the other four are on my watch list. I'm definitely looking at a certain price point that I'd be interested in jumping in at. There's only one stock on here that I'm not personally going to be investing in unless it drops to kind of a pretty significant lower than it is even right now. And it's simply because all these stocks I'm buying, I'm buying to hold long term. And that one happens to be an industry that my portfolio is already saturated pretty deeply in. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that these stocks are in no particular order, but how about we kick things off with a company that's trading at their 52 week low and pay over a 3% dividend yield and that's gonna be Kraft Heinz Foods. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, those two companies did merge together, so we have Kraft and Heinz together as one company, and they carry a lot more than just those two brands. I mean, if you walk around just a grocery store, just right off the top of my head, A1 Steak Sauce, Jell-O, Lunchables, Planner's Peanuts, the Oscar Mayer brand, these guys own so much of pretty much everything you guys see in the food market that even if one or two brands start to slip, it's kind of like P&G and Johnson & Johnson we've talked about lately. This is one of those companies that's going absolutely nowhere anytime soon. So the fact they're buying at their 52-week low right now, this is absolutely a stock that I'm looking at. And this is one of those four I just said I'm not personally invested in. But there's probably not a better one on this list than Kraft Foods. Now, next up, let's get one of the controversial ones out of the way right away. And that's going to be General Electric. If we take a look here, trading by far at their one-year low... And I know there's a lot of management kind of kicking around and a lot of things changing with the company right now. And I know there's been talks about, you know, they might have to reduce the dividend, at least in the short term. But at under 23 bucks a share, I have absolutely no problem throwing money into a company like GE right now. They're a company worth billions and billions of dollars. They've been around forever. And this is one of those companies that's almost too big to fail. They're going to come back around. And I promise you that, you know, three, four or five years from now, you're going to be kicking yourself if you didn't pick this stock up when it's trading at only 23 bucks. Now, the third one on this list, another stock you guys know I'm invested in and I think very highly about, and that's going to be the biggest multimedia company in the world right now, and that's going to be AT&T. $220 billion market cap on these guys right now. And take a look there. We're actually in kind of one of those valleys. This is a company that bounces around a little bit, but you're absolutely not going to find a better time than right now to buy into these guys. If we take a look, they're down almost 7% or a little over 7% just in the last week alone. 
So this is one of those companies that will definitely kind of travel between this $35.50 price point and $41. But these guys pay out a 4.5% dividend payout. And it's a good consistent long hold here, guys. And trust me, there's no better price you're going to get in at than right here around $35, $36 bucks a share. And I personally just added a couple more shares myself of these guys. I was already pretty heavily invested in the mobile industry. But at this price point, I just couldn't help myself but buy a couple more shares of AT&T. So up next is going to be the one stock I was alluding to that I'm not personally invested in and I'm probably not going to be buying into. And that's going to be Sprint. If we take a look down over 16% just in the last three months. And personally, the only reason why I'm not investing in these guys is because at and is on sale right now. And I'd rather a company with a really high dividend payout and that I honestly think has a better future ahead of them. That being said, if you're somebody who likes to kind of take a little bit more of a risk, there's that talk about Sprint joining with T-Mobile, and at $7.18 a share, right now there's probably no better time to buy Sprint stock. So if you're somebody who wants to take a little bit more of a gamble, maybe take a look at Sprint. I figured I'd throw them on here because, you know, they fit the value. I mean, we're talking about stocks that are on sale. Sprint's absolutely on sale. But remember, there's a difference between sale and clearance. Some things you're going to want to stay away from. So Sprint, one I want to throw out there. Personally, I prefer AT&T in this situation. Now, up next is the one stock on this list that I don't necessarily plan on holding long term. That's H&R Block. If we take a look over the last three months, down almost 17%. And the reason why I like these guys right now, especially at $25 a share, we're towards the end of Q3 now, which means we're slowly creeping up on Q1, which is obviously when H&R Block is going to do all of their business. So this is one of those stocks I'm buying now. I'm going to wait till that earnings announcement comes out after Q1, which is the only quarter these guys actually post a profit. And, you know, if this stock goes back up to where it's been, even in the last three months there at 30, 40 bucks, that's not so bad. And if it doesn't, you know what? These guys still pay out a pretty good dividend. And it's one of those ones that right now, since it's on sale this much, I definitely don't have hard feelings about holding these long term. And that's kind of what these on sale stocks should be about, you know? It shouldn't be one of those situations where I'm buying it because it's on sale and I'm hoping it goes back up. Well, if it doesn't, it's got to be something you're comfortable holding long term. And for me personally, H&R Block, I have no problem holding this one two, three years if I have to. And if we take a look here, we're going to see kind of a familiar customer on this list, and that's going to be LPL. Now, as you guys know, LG Displays has been listed on both of the last two stocks I'm buying video. And if we take a look, 21.5% down in the last three months. So it definitely looks like to a lot of people like, oh man, maybe this is just a bad stock. But take a look, guys, just where it's been peaking here, less than a month ago, we were up almost 15 bucks a share. And in the last three months, we were up there at almost 17, 1662. And again, this is one of those companies that I like what I see in the future of them. I like their earnings. This is probably the smallest in terms of market cap on this entire list. But hey, for me personally, I like this stock when it's up around 14, 15 bucks a share. So I absolutely love it right now under 13. Now these last four stocks aren't going to be like the previous ones where we're talking their 52 week low. However, these are stocks you're going to hold for the rest of your life. Again, these are all great blue chip stocks that pay really good dividends. So I'm not that worried about paying, you know, four or five dollars above their 52 week low. So up first, we're going to take a look here at IBM. They're down about five bucks in the last three months, which is about 3.13%. Not really that bad if you think about it, because again, huge dividend payout that way. And if we take a look at the last year, this is a company that's definitely kind of went up there. They peaked, I think, at about 180 bucks or so. And then they've kind of sloped back down here. So when we have a company like IBM that's just tried and true, they're going to be a company that's around, you know, the next 20, 30 years from now. I absolutely love when you can buy in a little bit of a sale here. So I'm not saying this is a company that should usually be trading way up at that $180 mark. However, when they're down there at 147, I can definitely see some good value and some good time to buy into IBM. Now, up next is gonna be a stock that unfortunately was a lot more on sale when I made this list originally, and that's gonna be Pepsi. If we take a look, when I originally wrote this list, they were down here at 109, which was down you know, a little bit over 4%. So we've already had a little bit of a rebound on this company, but I'm not too worried about it. Again, good dividends. They're well diversified company themselves. You know, they own so many brands of different kinds of soda. They get into water. You know, we get into pet or Gatorade. They also own Doritos. So it's a company that's pretty expansive and they cover quite a few different markets. So I'm pretty big on PepsiCo right now. 
I know I've said in the past, they're not this big flashy company, but you know what? Who needs a big flashy company when you're getting paid a decent dividend return, as well as there's definitely some growth coming back towards this company as well. Now, the last two might seem like a little bit of a cop-out because they're two stocks we just talked about and it's a stocks I'm buying video. And it's because I put them on there because they were on huge sales. So if we take a look here at P&G, again, when we put them on the video here, we were trading much, much lower. You know, we were trading down in the mid-91s. So they have come up a little bit here to 93. But again, still a little bit of on sale in terms of what it's been in the last month. If we take a look here at the last three months and last year, they're actually up. However, P&G is one of those companies you're going to buy and hold forever. So even if the sale price is only 1% off or, you know, half a percent off wherever you can get it, this is definitely a company that you buy even if it's only slightly on sale. Now, number 10 kind of hits the fortunately, unfortunately category here. Because fortunately, if you bought it when I made this list or when we're talking about stocks I'm buying, you bought in at a $129.50 or somewhere around that range. Unfortunately, in the last couple days, doesn't really fit the criteria anymore. It's actually up to $136.56. So unfortunately, not really fitting the criteria for this video anymore. However, it's still one of those companies that I would buy into and hold it long term anyway. But if we take a look there, great for me. I bought in way cheaper. Unfortunately for this list, they kind of didn't want to cooperate here in the last day or two. So I hope that video kind of helps you guys out at least a little bit. And again, I'm invested in six out of the 10 of these and the other four are in my watch list right now. These are companies that absolutely are worthy of being owned five, 10, 15, 20 years from now. And hey, if you can get in at a better price point, why not buy something when it's on sale?